Live in your living room, this is Sports Town. Welcome back to the show, live on Lincoln Road. I'm Mark Jones. To many Americans, the sport of high is a bit of a mystery. But here in Miami, the sport is making a roaring resurgence. Two key things make it very attractive, the athleticism involved and the fact that you can bet money on the results, legally, and win. Yesterday, I had an opportunity to take a crash course in the sport, and I mean crash. It's a game that requires the arm strength of a pitcher, the hand-eye coordination of a world-class tennis player, and infinite courage. It's called high Alive, and right in our midst is the Yankee Stadium of the sport, the Carnegie Hall of high Alive, where the game's elite work their magic. You know, High Life is a game that has its roots in Europe, France, and Spain, most notably. We as North Americans are fixated with speed and a lot of scoring, and High Life is a perfect fit. A lot of points, and at times, the ball comes out of this basket at speeds of over 150 miles per hour. The rumors of High Life's death have been greatly exaggerated. The indoor sport is experiencing a revival. So to get educated, I participated, and the sport will never be the same. And I'm locked in. And who better to teach me the fundamentals than Jorge Soti, also known as Last of the Third, and one of the best backcourters in the United States. And Daniel Love, considered the top American highlight player in the world today. One of you guys show us a good serve. All right, first of all, you want to have your arms straight. Arms straight. Wrist loose. Loose. Let it go limp. How tough is it to catch it? Because to me, when you're looking at the subtleties of the game, that seems to be one of the most difficult things is playing the carom off the wall and being able to see it right into your, your basket. I like school, they teach you to catch the ball like it's an egg and you don't want to break it. Okay. Because as fast as that ball's coming, if you just stick your basket out there, it's going to pop right out. Oh, man. Can't judge that thing. That's live. How long have you guys been playing high life for? First. Oh, God, I turned pro when I was 17. That was uh, 18 years ago. Wow. Yourself? 13 seasons I've been playing. What do you do when you when you go out to a party and a girl rolls up to you and she says, oh, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm a high life player. She says, what's that? How do you explain a high life? It, it, come this way. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of conditioning does it take to be one of the top flight high life players? Well, it's like any any sport, you know. Yeah. You got to try your hardest. You got to practice a lot. You got to try to correct your errors. And physical condition is a lot to do with it, you know, a lot of endurance, uh, you know, a lot of cardiovascular. and. Mm -hmm. I'm what about the growth of the sport in the United States? The industry has been struggling for a while, but we're bouncing back now. Right. You know, we're getting some coverage, and a lot of the people are seeing it on the Intertrack wagering system that we have. So things look good. You know, Things look like they're going to be the, the way that they used to be, and that's what we're shooting for, the, like the good old days. All right, and joining us right now, Jorge Soti and uh, Daniel Love, uh, two of the top players in Highlight here in Miami. Guys, thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, Pleasure. You guys are about to embark on a pretty bu busy season coming up here in December, aren't you? Yes, uh, December 25th, uh, we start our uh, winter season. And uh, Daniel, uh, what are your thoughts on it? Coming? Yeah, it's, it's a good time of the year for us. You know, a lot of tourists in town, and it gives us a uh, good exposure, and, and we're really looking forward to, to getting the season started. So. Okay, we're going to walk down here, Daniel, and, and we're going to play a little, a little bit of catch, but we're kind of uh, right. talking to you guys about this. And we got the wiffle ball, which uh, makes uh, it a little bit easier. Yeah. We yeah. talk about it. What, what's what's yeah. the toughest thing to pick up when you're starting this for? The, the eye-hand coordination? Yeah, or obviously because the ball one travels one it's at, a, at a fast pace, you know, it's very hard to keep your eye on it, and, and your hand-eye coordination, is, it plays a lot into it. And the release point. Tell us what yeah, the release point is. Yeah, a lot of people is. think, you know, we throw the ball like a baseball player or a football player, but naturally what it is is with a straight arm and a real limp wrist. So we just like throwing a Frisbee or whatever, we just kind of like swing it. It's more like a golf swing than anything else. Okay, and it, we're actually using a tennis ball, so this isn't the actual ball you use, but right. let's give it a shot here. Sure. You guys do make it look relatively easy. Now, what about the, the, the betting part of it? Because we were talking about that earlier. It, it's uh, kind of take us through how you would, if I went there and said, you know, I, I, this guy looks good, uh, how, do, how would I bet on you? Right. Yeah, that's real similar to, you know, the horse tracks or whatever. There's a lot of handicapping involved. You know, being in the post one or the post two, you're going to get more chances on the court than a lot of the other players. So uh, handicapping is a lot involved with it as, as well as anything else is luck. <laughs> okay. So. All right. How does, a, how does a guy get involved in high line? If you want to become a high line player, where do you begin? Well, they had a couple of schools in, uh, they had one in North Miami. They had another one up in Connecticut where young kids were able to go and the highlights uh, 
uh, produce facilities for the kids to teach them how to play. Uh, the sport originated in Spain, so in Spain you have highlight courts everywhere around the country. So over there, for like here in the United States, a kid picking up a baseball over there, they picked up a highlight basket. Mm -hmm. Pretty international game, right? Oh yeah, very international. And I hear there's a pretty extensive uh, scouting system in terms of guys progressing up through the ranks to make it here to Miami, which is virtually where everyone wants to play highlight, right? Oh, of course. Uh, you know, Miami's always been considered Yankee Stadium of highlight. Uh, they usually start off when you're a rookie, you usually start off at Fort Pierce or, or Ocala, and then from there, once you start progressing, then you'll make it to the big leagues. Hmm. Again, we're talking about the equipment. This is called the assessed. Yeah, highlight assessed. Kind of take us through how this is made, because it's a rather intricate, elaborate a bit of, uh, looks right. like rattan or right. something. Right, yeah. They're, it's made out of wicker, and uh, they're made personally for each player, you know, to their specific, you know, modifications. And they cost about $300. They last about anywhere from a week to three playing weeks. And, and there's leather back here. It's yeah, almost like a glove yeah, that's, your hand that's fits, attached to it. Your hand fits almost like a baseball glove. Just sits right in there and you tie it down with this with this tie and it keeps it from uh, coming out. Wow. So. Jorge, one thing I noticed when you guys were playing, the fans who had bet money on you were really into it. And they were actually kind of cussing some of you guys out when you missed the ball because they got money riding on the results. How do you handle that? Uh, it's tough. Uh, we know that they're betting their money. We're also out there. Every time we come in the money, we get an incentive. So there's an incentive for us to win. And we get frustrated just like they do. And a lot of times when they say something to you, you know, you hold back as much as you can. <laughs> but there's just some times you just can't. You just let it all out. I get a lot of respect for the way you guys do your thing. And thanks a lot for joining us, Jorge and Daniel Love. All right. And good luck in the upcoming season. Do you want to stick around? Because, you know, in the movies, if you made it, you get an Oscar. In TV, it's the Emmys. But uh, in pro football, you know you've made it when you see what Terrell Davis of the uh, Denver Broncos did. Sports Town coming back in just a bit. It has nothing to do with his day job, though. You want to hear this? After this Sports Town trivial...